afternoon everybody and welcome to topic so this is a lesson i really love teaching so i'm really sad that you're not going to be in school to be part of these discussions and for us to think um together but hopefully i put it together in a way that you still enjoy it so we're going to look this afternoon at the anglo-saxons and where they came from why they chose to invade britain and if you were an anglo-saxon where would you choose to uh, create your settlement or village so you can so you can see on the map that the Dukes, the Anglies and the Saxons, they came from Europe and they invaded Britain. So the Dukes came from uh, up here and they uh, invaded the very south of England. The Anglies came over and they um, occupied the Midlands and the north of England. And the Saxons came over and occupied the south. Now it's really important to know that the Anglo-Saxons came fr uh, from Europe and chose to invade Britain because their homes in Europe were flooded and so they couldn't grow crops. If you can't grow crops, you can't sell them, so you can't make money. And if you've got no crops, you've got no food, so you can't live. So I want you to take a minute or so now to go away and have a think about the following questions. How would the Anglo-Saxons have travelled uh, have travelled and arrived in Britain? Why were they evacuating their own country and coming to ours? And I've just told you some information about that. And finally, what might they have been thinking as they approached Britain? What thoughts were maybe going around their head? So take a minute, jot some ideas down and come back and I'll show you what I've been thinking. So I thought about the question, what might the Anglo-Saxons be thinking as they approach Britain? And this is what I came up with. So they might be worrying about how the Brits are going to react. They might be worrying about whether they'll be able to grow their crops. They've just come from a place where they can't do that. They won't have anywhere to live. What are Britain floods to? How are they going to build their houses? Will there be enough food? Is someone going to kill us? I think that's a pretty reasonable a thing to think about is someone going to kill us if we don't uh, if we invade their land you know they're running away because they've got no crops but it's not going to be ideal if they land and someone kills them so i'm sure you have some great ideas but what i'd like you to think about next is the following so when the anglo-saxons came to britain they came to a country they didn't belong uh, that didn't belong to them and they had to fight to stay here okay what were the must-haves of this country for them to stay here? What would they need to survive? So thinking about the following questions. What would they need to build houses? What sort of food might they eat? What sort of land would they need? What would they need to be able to cook? Are there going to be any hazards? And what about the defence against others? They're invading somewhere where the Celts and the Vikings are living. They're going to need to defend themselves against those people in case they start to attack. So I want you to go away and have a think about what are the must-haves that they are going to need to be able to survive when they get there. Go and have a think, jot some ideas down. I gave you the first one. You're going to need water. Haven't got water, you can't survive. Come back and see how your answers compare. Well, here are some of my ideas. So I've got water. They're going to need water to drink, uh, to make food, to do lots of things. They're going to need space to build and to farm. They're going to need to be able to build their houses. They're going to need to be able to build their farm so they can um, grow their crops. They're going to need materials to build. They might need wood, so they're going to be need, uh, need to be near a forest, maybe. Okay. They're going to need protection. Protection from other people invading. So they always say to build your castle on the highest hill you can find because you'll see them coming up the hill to um, inv um to attack. So we're probably going to need some high land and some mountains. So I know you probably thought of some other ideas and there's an opportunity later in your lesson pack to write them down. So today we're going to think about if this if we were invading and this is the map we were given where we would like to invade so there is site a there is site b and the site c and down here you can see the key so here this and the key is mushy floodplain so the resources you can get from here will be water uh fishing and reeds fishing means that we can get food water means we have something to drink the key for this area here and here 
is a flight, la lightly wooded river terraced with good soil and above flood uh, floodplain. So you're going to be able to get sticks and firewood and you're going to be able to crop your, uh, grow your crops there because there's good soil and it's above the floodplain, which means it's not going to get flooded. And finally, we have this tree area around the outside, forested uplands. There's timber for building, there's game, which means you'll be able to hunt small animals to cook and feed off. And obviously in the forest, you're going to have a lot of wood. Okay, so I want you to think carefully about that. So if you had been in school, we would have had used the little click key here to measure and find out how far away we were from each type of resource, but I've done it for you instead. So if you were to pick here, which is site A, you are 50 metres away from water, that's quite close. You're 100 metres away from wood to build. You're 50 metres away from thatch, the reeds to build the roofs. And you're zero metres away from uh, farm farming. But you are at the bottom of the hill. If you need to defend your settlement, it's going to be quite hard. So that's something to think about. Site B over here, you're zero metres away from water. You're 200 metres away from wood. You're zero metres away from the thatch reeds for the roof. And you're 50 metres away from uh, the farming. Now, being that close to the thatch reed and the water is quite good. However, your land is probably likely to flood. Also, 200 metres away from building timber. That's a long way to be carrying all that wood, so that's something to think about. And finally, site C up here, 300 metres from water, 0 metres from wood, 30 metres from uh, the reeds, and 50 metres for land for farming. Now, this could be potentially quite a good place because you're protected from the trees, you're in higher land, but 300 metres away from water is quite far so what i would like you to do is when you open the um document you'll see that i've asked you to list all the things that you think are must-haves when invading a country for what you're going to need to start your new life and then using the map i want you to come up with whether if it was you you would uh, set up camp in site a b or c i want you to explain why uh, and the, about the positives. So I've said I would set up my camp in site A as it is close to everything that I need, as well as explaining the negatives. However, the land is not very high, so if someone invaded, I'd be in trouble. So you're going to have a think about those things. Now, I've saved the map in the lesson as a picture so you can see it up close as well. So there's lots of things for you to do. I'm looking forward to see where you pick your settlement.